Dr. Boom's Incredible Inventions tier list. Uh, I'm going to go through all the cards, just rate them S through D. I'm not going to do anything special. I don't have, you know, any special tierings that I want to do for this one. I just want to do what cards I think are going to be good, which ones I think are going to be bad. Of course, this is for wild. Blah. So for some reason, people don't realize that. You know, I've only posted 8 million wild videos, but I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting with Bargain Bin. I think this is a probably an A tier card. It's definitely a great card. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's strictly tied to Secret Hunter and to Even Hunter, possibly to Reno Hunter as well. But those decks are okay. You know, Reno Hunter is okay. Secret Hunter and Even Hunter are not amazing. So you can't really put it as like an S tier card where it's going to be like, oh, it's obviously going to be an auto include in a great deck. Still a good card nonetheless. Uh, building Block Golem, I think is like a, I, I'd call it like a C tier card. Uh, it's five mana, six, three, rush, death rattle, summon three, one cost minions. I think this card is really good in death rattle demon hunter, but the issue is that death rattle demon hunter isn't really a good deck. It's easily the best five drop, uh, death rattle though for the deck. So, or because it's very aggressively statted, it has a lot of like stickiness. It's just a really good card. Uh, to pull off of Speaker Blackthorn, but the deck isn't very good, so I don't really... Yeah. Uh, buy one, get one, freeze. I think this is like a, a C-tier card. So, it's three mana, it freeze minion, summon a copy of it. The issue is, it's just worse than Reverberations, and it's worse than Molten Reflection. Reverberations being a shadow spell is pretty big for your Wisdom of Norganon to draw, and... Uh, it's worse than Molten Reflection because you can't discount it with Hot Streak. So it's just not that great of a card. Dark Moon Magician, useless card. Three mana, two, four, elusive. After you cast a spell, cast a random spell, it costs one more. You're supposed to play this in like a funny, you know, casino mage, stuff like that. It's just not a good card. It's not very good. Delayed Product, four mana, discover and summon an Indian that costs eight or more. It goes dormant for two turns. Terrible card. Literally will see no play whatsoever. Not even like kind of okay passable like these cards and c tier just bad uh foam render five mana five one uh unholy one rune whenever your hero attacks spend three corpses to gain plus one durability i think this is a really good card it's just it would only go into you know rainbow death knight because the only uh unholy death knight is even and you can't run this and even because it's five mana for four mana it would be an s tier card in my opinion but you know uh, Rainbow Death Knight is a deck for sure, but it's not amazing. So I don't think it goes anywhere else after that. Same, uh, actual same, literally exactly the same for Toy Snatching Giant or Geist. I think you play this in, you know, a Rainbow Death Knight because we're getting random undeads is pretty good, especially when they cost two less. Uh, and then of course you have the Gigantify for some late game value and you can pick some more expensive undeads and they'll cost eight less. It's quite good. Dubious pa uh, Purchase, I think is pretty bad. Four mana, draw three cards, combo, destroy a random enemy minion. Uh, if this were literally in any single other class other than Rogue, it would be probably like an S-tier card. If this were a Mage card, a, a Warlock card, a Hunter card, or a Warrior card, or something like that, Shaman card, it would be like probably the best card of the entire set. But because it's a Rogue card, and Rogue already has access to way better card draw for a lot cheaper, it this card just sucks. And then the combo doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, destroying a random enemy minion is useful, but it's not good enough to make this card see play. Dust Bunny, atrocious card. Three mana, three, two, battle crying death rattle, add a random piece of junk to your hand, coin, rock, banana, or knife. Uh, the rock is deal three, the knife is a one mana, one, or, yeah, one, two weapon, and then a banana and coin, you know? I mean, this card's terrible. Like, if it had rush, maybe. But the fact that it doesn't, like, have Rush or anything means you have to wait, like, a full turn to trade it off for Death Rattle. And then the pieces aren't very good. If we're just Rock and Coin, it would be kind of okay. But the Knife and the Banana really make it a lot worse. Uh, Explode Near. I think Explode Near is, like, a C-tier card. It's 3 mana, 2, 5. I can't tell because the stats are cut off. Uh, at the end of your turn, shuffle a Bomb into your opponent's deck. I mean, Bomb Warrior isn't great. But you you would play this card in the deck is kind of the thing, uh, yeah. That's all I got to say about it, really. I mean, it's a it's a good standalone card. I think that you could run this in like a lot of decks because it is neutral. 
and not feel too bad. Like if you ran this in like Arena Priest, you wouldn't be that upset because it's just, you know, three mana, two, five, eventually deal five damage to your opponent. Not actually that bad by any means. It's not amazing, but it's definitely like decent. Uh, Flickering Lightbot, I think this card is pretty good. I'd say it's probably one of the best cards of the, the set. Uh, the whole thing is it's 3 mana 3-3 three, three, Gigantify, which is, you know, add an 8 mana version of the card to your hand. 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight version, if you don't know. Uh, cost 1 less for each Holy Spell you've cast this game. Uh, I think this is genuinely strong enough to bring back Light Glare. Uh, Light Glare, you know, as the name implies, you play a lot of Holy Spells and, car and Paladin cards to reduce the cost of Giants and Light Spawns and now Flickering Light Bot to, you know, Build a gigantic board, tempo down your opponent. You can use it with Librams, so you can get a lot of value. I think this is probably one of the better cards of the set. Uh, yeah. Funhouse Mirror, summon a copy of an enemy minion that attacks the original. I think it's like a B-tier card. I think you would run this in Shadow Priest. It's really good at killing giants, like really good. Uh, you know, the other option for being really good at killing giants is Light That Burns, but that's a holy spell. Funhouse Mirror is a shadow spell. It can steal Titans, which is very, very useful, uh, you know, in later game scenarios. I think this card is quite decent. I think B-tier is a good placement for it. Uh, Gibbering Reject, I think, is probably like a D-tier card. I think if this card was 3 mana, it would be really good. But at 4 mana, you can't really run it in like an odd Demon Hunter. And that's the only aggro version of Demon Hunter you have in Wild. Uh I mean, it's 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, demon, after hero attack, summon another Gibbering Reject. It's just not really that good. Uh, it technically combos with going down swinging, but, like, that's 8 mana. It's just not good. Uh, Holy Glow Stick, this card is fucking insane. So, not even just talking about any synergies or anything with this card. It's 4 mana, lifesteal, deal 4 damage, cost 1 if you cast a Holy Spell this turn. So, it's 1 mana, deal 4 damage with lifesteal. What? Uh, one mana deal poor damage in the past was Soulfire, which discarded a card. I mean, yeah, discard eventually became, you know, a upside rather than a downside, but that's still crazy. Uh, this card is definitely, like, nuts on its own. Uh, I think you definitely run this in a lot of different Paladin decks. Like, if, if we do see a light glare Paladin, of course, you're gonna run Holy Glow Sick, is obviously. I think it's pretty nuts. Uh... I mean, it's also just the fact that it's one mana deal for damage is so disgusting. Then you have Infernal. It's a four mana, six, six. Uh, taunt, battle cry, restore, or set your heroes and remaining health to 15. I think this is honestly a better card than a lot of other people. Uh, I think the fact that it's, you know, taunt, it's overstatted. Reducing your health to 15 doesn't matter in most matchups. And in like aggro matchups, it will actually heal you. So that's pretty useful. Reducing your health to, to 15. Also makes it so you can play your Molten Giants in, like, slower matchups, which is really hard to do. Uh, I really think this card is going to go in even Warlock. I don't really understand why people don't think so. Like, yeah, it's not an amazing card, but it just synergizes so well with the deck. Uh, you're probably healing, like, 5 to 10 health with this on average against aggro, and it's a big taunt minion to slow them down. Like, if you're playing against, like, Shadow Priest, which is going to, you know, fuck you over, you'll probably not have 15 health by turn 4. So this will heal you a little bit, and it's a six, a six health taunt. I think this is genuinely not that bad of a card. Uh, Domino Effect, very good card. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as Bargain Bin, that it's stuck in pretty mediocre decks, but it's a really good card. So if you, pl ev so if you play this, if there's seven minions on board and you play it in the middle, it does two, then three to the adjacents, then four to the adjacents, then five to the adjacents. If you have seven minions on board and you play it on the left, it does two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to all the way to that right minion. This card has a lot, and I mean a lot of different variations on how you can use it properly. Uh, and it's super high, it's a super high skill testing card that Warlock is known for with the file. And you know, obviously people get better and better at the file as the years go while well, it's on, so they will with Domino Effect, but this is a really good removal card for the class. And I think that if Reno Warlock does come back, this card will definitely go in the deck. Mass Production, uh, one mana, draw two cards, deal three damage to your hero, shuffle two copies of this in your deck. Uh, a lot of people seem to not understand that Fatigue is not the only way that Questline Warlock can play the game. Uh, you can play the Giants version or Dark Lair, and this definitely goes in those versions. 
Uh, there's also the Highlander version, or not, yeah, not the Highlander version, sorry. The Renathal version, which runs 40 cards and doesn't go to Fatigue either. This definitely goes in that deck. And I think you still run this as a one-of in the Fatigue version anyway. I think this card is absolutely insane. Uh, worst case scenario, it's just cycling your, it's just a cycle card at worst, worst cycle card that deals three damage to your hero, which is good. That's just good. Objectively. Uh, I think it's just really good overall. Helm of Humiliation. It's four mana, uh, two blood rune, uh, give a minion minus five, minus five, give a minion in your hand, plus five, plus five. There is a, uh, what is it? There's a Paladin card that is three mana, uh, set a minion to one, one, give its remaining stats to a random minion in your hand. Uh, and that card is three mana. I think on average, it's gonna, it's a little worse, but the fact that it's three mana means that it's a lot better and two blood runes means you can't run this in like an un or in a rainbow and, you know, hand buff death knight is not really good by any means. So I think this card is kind of mediocre. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not as bad as these bottom cards, but it's not amazing. It's kind of the thing. Uh, then you have Malfunction, two mana, deal three damage, split amongst all enemy minions. If your deck has no spells, deal six instead. This is a pretty good card. I think that no spell quest mage is kind of okay. Uh, like no spell uh, waygate quest mage is kind of okay. It's not amazing, but I think this card definitely helps the deck a lot. It's like plus one damage on minefield, but because of the restriction, I still think it should be seven damage total, like deal four and then go up to seven, in my opinion, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, I think this is just a pretty good card overall. It's nothing crazy. I think it's like it's on the same power level as these cards where it's kind of good. It might, might make the cut, but nothing crazy. Uh, Murloc Grofin, I think this card is really good in Murloc decks. And possibly with, like, Shutterblock and, like, a uh, Galakron the Tempest-style deck. But I'm not too sure if that will really pop up. I think it's about a B-tier card. It's really good in Murloc decks. It's if that kind of Galakron, you know, like, big Shutter Shaman, big board swing kind of deck is playable. It will go in it. But uh, it, it, that just has to be seen. This is one of those cards where it just has to be seen if it makes enough of an impact to do anything we just have to find out uh it might just be good enough because shutterwalk is more about you know locking out your opponent and building a gigantic board for one turn than like trying to do burn damage or anything like that that's more how shutterwalk's playing right now and this might just be good enough in that deck because it's also just a kind of okay minion you know getting a 1-1 and then a 1-1 with rush is kind of okay uh then of course you know you don't even need to play the gigantify but you can. If you do it with Shutter Block, it's really good, but there's that. Uh, Overgrown Beanstalk. Summon a 2-2 Treant. Draw a card for each tree you control. It's three mana. I think this is a really good card. However, I think that Treant Druid is kind of just not great. So I feel like it just goes and like, I guess it would probably go in here based on other cards I've talked about. Uh, it's it's not a bad card by any means. It's more that Treant Druid is a bad deck. Or a bad deck than anything else, so this card definitely gets held back. If we get more Treant Druid support, this will be a very good card, but I don't know. Treant Druid and Wild is just kind of not there, is kind of the thing. Uh, part Scrapper, two mana, lose up to five armor, your next mech costs that much less. Uh, a lot of people are really overhyping this card. There aren't actually good mechs to discount. Mechs are kind of not that great at higher mana costs. Like, yeah, you have Zilliax, but like, okay. Um, this card is not bad. The card itself is really strong. It's just, like I'm saying, there's not really that many good mechs to discount in Warrior or in Neutral. So you kind of don't have much to do with it, to be honest with you. Uh, Pro Gamer. I think this card is actually kind of funny for mill decks. It's two mana, two, three. Battle Cry, Challenger, Opponent, Rock, Paper, Scissors. The winner draws two cards. I think if Mill Druid... If you are going to play Mill Druid, you are playing this in that deck. Like... But Mill Druid's kind of not that great after the due process nerf. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's like, it's playable, but it's not amazing. Uh, you definitely run Programmer in it because you don't care if you draw cards and you're happy if your opponent draws cards. And then worst case scenario, it's a River Croc and that's not, not that terrible. Uh, product 9. 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Battlecry recast every friendly secret that triggered this game. Uh, you can do it with upgraded secrets as well. So that's something people don't 
no for some reason. I I mean, I made a Twitter post about it. I've talked about it a couple times. Uh, yeah, you can use upgraded secrets with it. So you can get like double motion denied and it deals 15 damage. And that's really cool. You can get multiple copies of it with selective breeder. Do not run. Do not get baited into running timeline accelerator with this card. It, the discount from timeline accelerator literally does not matter. You're paying plus one mana up front for minus two mana later, but you're not getting to cheat this card out, which is why you want something like, uh, kind of like, sorry, to play the mech earlier. You, product nine, you have to wait until you play a lot of secrets for it to be useful. So it's actually just a waste to use the timeline accelerator. And again, because if you do draw it, you can't get multiple copies from selective breeder, which is going to be where this card sees a lot of power is. Yeah. You have one board with it, but since you have say two product nines in your deck because of breeder, that second one is really going to push it over the line because of motion denied upgraded motion denied all these secrets. It's really what's going to push your opponent over the edge because they're not going to be able to remove all of the boards that you're generating. Uh, and you can, you know, push for that lethal damage. Puppet Theater, I think, is just a bad card. It's four mana, location, choose an enemy minion, get a 1-1 one, one copy of it that costs one. Uh, I think you would just play Convert. Convert is three mana. Get get a one mana copy of an enemy minion. Uh, yeah, it's only a one-time thing compared to Puppet Theater, but minus one mana on the initial cost is huge. Especially since, like, I mean, what? how many times are you going to get value from this in Wild is the thing. Plus one mana to maybe only get one really good activation doesn't actually matter. Uh, if if they're both only going to be stealing one minion that's good anyway, you want the minus one mana. So I think that Puppet Theater is just worse than Convert. Convert already sees play in a lot of ETCs and Reno pre-stacks anyway. So there's that. Uh, Puppet Master Dorian, four mana, two, six. After you draw a minion, get a one, one copy of it. That costs one. I think this card has potential to be really good in wild. It's just no one's really found the combo yet. Uh, it might not come this expansion. It might not come next expansion, but it will eventually come. There's no way that a card like this does not break the format at some point. It's more likely this card gets nerfed because of standard too, actually. So you do have that to look forward to. I think the card just, it's just such an insane combo enabler that there is a world where this will be too good. There's just no way it won't. Uh, return policy. Three mana, discover a friendly death rattle card you've played this game, uh, trigger it, and I think it's return it to your hand. Whatever. Uh, anyway, I think this card is just strictly worse than Nine Lives because Death Rattle Demon Hunter is all about summoning death rattles, and this is only death rattles you've played. So I think this card literally cannot function in a Death Rattle Demon Hunter package. I, I mean, like, I don't really need to explain further than that, right? Like, why? If it can't function with the cards, then why would you play it? Rocket Hopper, 5 mana, 10-10, Rush, Overload 4. A lot of people are thinking about like, oh, you could play this with, uh, what's it called? It's the 3 mana, 3-4 three, from Titans and Shaman that draws you for overloaded crystals and unoverloads you. And I'm like, that's that's a standard combo. That's way too slow for Wild. Uh, yeah, it's a four, 5 mana, 10-10, ten, ten, but like, that's not, that's not. Who cares? It's the same issue as Mukla, right? Where people thought Mukla would be really good in like a lot of these decks, but it, it just because it's a big minion doesn't really mean anything, right? Mukla is not actually that good of a minion. Uh, yeah, he's six mana, ten ten rush, but he and he mills a card. Okay, and like that's not useful. That's six mana, kill one minion, and then pass. And against aggro, it fills your opponent's hand with damage. So it's just not not good. Safety expert. Rush, uh, or 10 mana, 8-8, eight, eight. Rush, Death Rattle, Shuffle, three bombs to your opponent's deck. I think this is significantly worse than Exploded here, but I think it's still a fine card. Uh, you would play this in, you know, the big, uh, you know, big mech warrior. I just don't think it's the best mech. I think it's better than these cards, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's not amazing. I think this card is fine in big warrior, like, regular big warrior, but I don't know. I, I Honestly, I don't know. I think that... If we didn't have the fucking stupid ass Highlander buffs that came in the la one of the last Ballast patches, where shuffle cards no longer turn off the new Highlander cards, it would be a lot better. But Blizzard just like completely dropped the ball with this mini set and adding bomb cards because of that. Like, why did they do that? Uh, Snuggle Teddy, three mana, two four, Gigantify, Elusive, Lifesteal, Taunt. I think it's fine. 
Uh, I think this card is pretty okay. Uh, I mean, I don't really have much sales past that. I don't even know if it would be there. It's probably, like, here. It's just okay. It's not anything crazy. I don't think this sees the play literally anywhere. But, like, it's not objectively bad like these other cards. That's kind of the thing. Like, if you could play it in, like, a Taunt Druid, and that's not the worst thing in the world, you know? But it's just not amazing is the thing. It's just not very good. Uh, Sock Puppet Slither Spear. I think this card is really, really strong. The issue is just, like, I mean, you could only play it in, like, Odd Demon Hunter, and Odd Demon Hunter isn't amazing. Uh, yeah, it's really good for the deck, but the deck itself is pretty bad. It's kind of the same like thing about a lot of these cards, is they're really powerful, but the deck itself is terrible. Uh, a lot of these A-tier cards. Um, I mean, yeah, that's all I, all I really have to say about it, right? Like, it's one mana, one three. This means attack is improved by your heroes, so if you gain, like, if you gain two attack from your hero power, and then, like, four attack from, you know, two twin slices, it gains six attack. That's really good, and then it will keep that attack because it doesn't say, like, this turn or anything. So if it doesn't die, it can scale out of control like crazy, but, like, it's really weak in terms of being... Er, not really weak. It's not a top-tier one-mana minion, even though it's such a crazy effect because other one-mana minions summon patches, you know? Or they're, like, Void Touch Attendant. Or they are patches, you know? It's just... Yeah. A standardized pack... Terrible. Add five random thought minions to your hand at the end of turn to discard them. Terrible card. It's so useless. The only use that it has is with Finley, and it's not even good. Like, don't, don't try it. Uh, Replicatinator. Replicator Innator. Uh, same thing as Dorian, where I think it's a card that has the potential to be really, really strong. It's just no one's really found it yet. Uh, I was toying with the idea of, like, putting it in a Menagerie Warrior with, like, Tent Thrasher. And you could also run Part Scrapper in that deck as well, but that's not amazing. Uh, I, I pass it on to the Warrior Discord, and they've been trying to make it look work, and it just looks terrible. It's not amazing. I mean, this card eventually will do something. It's the same as Dorian. Eventually, they will do something very strong, but like currently, it's probably just not amazing is the thing. Toy Rantis? I mean, it's going with Snuggle Teddy. It's just not useful in the slightest. Like, 6 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Taunt Elusive, Battle Cry if you have 10 mana crystals. Game plus 7, plus 7. It's just not useful at all. I mean, it's just it's just not. Uh, Twisted Pack, I'm going to say is an S-tier card. It's 1 mana, add 5 random cards from other classes to your hand. At the end of your turn, discard them. The reason this is better than the other two packs is because it actually does something. It makes your Wild Paw Null cost 0. It makes your Obsidian Shard cost 0. It, if you do shuffle it with Finley, you get actual good cards on average because, you know, random beasts and random taunt minions are terrible, but random cards from other classes can be anything. You can get some really good late game bombs, which is what you would want in a, you know, aggro style thief rogue, is you would want those late game bombs. Because after you run out of gas with aggro, then the late game bombs actually do stuff. Uh, the card really stops being useful past those three points, though. Uh, if you just rip it, you're never going to get anything good. You really do only want to play this if you have Knolls, if you have Shards, and if you have Finley. Uh, Wave of Nostalgia. Five mana, transform all minions into random legendary ones from the past. It's fucking terrible. Like, don't play this card. Whack a Knoll. One mana, discover a Paladin weapon from the past, give it plus one, plus one. There's way too many bad Paladin weapons, and, like, the Death Knight one that does something similar where it's one mana to discover a weapon, give it plus one plus one with three corpses is better because it's actually a corpse spender. Yeah, it has the the condition of spending three corpses, but you want to do that. You want to be spending those corpses. This is it the thing? So this card doesn't really give you like an alternative why you want to be playing it. You don't actually want to be discovering bad weapons. And then Wilderness Pack, of course, is terrible. One mana... Uh, get five random beasts at the end of your turn. Discard them. Terrible card. Don't run this in Reno Warrior or Reno Hunter. Don't do it. Don't get baited. You're gonna, like, it's just not a good card. The only use of it is with Finley and Reno Hunter. And then even at that, you could turn off your Reno, which is really bad. It's very possible. So don't do it. Just don't. Uh, anyway, 
If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Do you think I was right on any of these placements? Do you think I was wrong on any of them? Or any of these cards you think that like I should have done differently? Or did I miss anything from these cards? Let me know down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.